So in this video, I want to show you how you can use mid journey to generate really crazy normal maps and height maps just from 2d images. So like this, you can see here's just plugging a mid journey image into like the base color. And then with this add-on, which I'll show you in a second, you can just basically generate uh, normal, normal maps instantly like this. Uh, they're not perfect as you can see, but it does a good enough job that there's a lot of really crazy stuff you can do with this. So uh, yeah, I'm super excited about this because I did not know this was a thing until this guy on my YouTube channel just on the last video commented um, on Joe Films. Thank you very much for this comment here. Run it through deep bump add-on uh, and you can use normal and height maps with it. So uh, this add-on, I think uh, I'll leave a link to this in the description somewhere, but if you use this in combination with mid journey, you can get some really just crazy stuff. Um, so let me show you this. I just told Midjourney to generate a circle of intricate Illuminati patterns. I don't really know what that means, but it gave me this. So I think this is going to work well. Um, also included black background. So let's just save this image to my uh, desktop Midjourney. Just save it there and then I'll show you how this add-on works. So you download the add-on, install it like any other add-on. And then you have to run Blender as an administrator and then in the preferences, um, Find, find that deep bump add-on, and then you just have to click this button. Um, there's a button right here that says install this extra thing. Let me show you this. Let's do it on a plane like all these other ones, just for example's sake. So let's go regular plane, new texture, and then all you do is you just um, grab whatever image. So let's find that one I just made. So here's our Illuminati pattern. Uh, so just drag and drop that in. Uh, that will work. Sometimes you have to hold it for a second. It's kind of weird. So let's run that into the base color. And then let's also, um, well, the way this add-on works is you press N to bring up this menu of all this stuff. And then just find deep bump right here. And then all you do is just click on this, on uh, the image that's running into the base color. And then you just press this button right here, um, color to normals. Click that. So yeah, you just click that button and then it generates a normal map out of just the base color. So it seems like it doesn't work super well sometimes if you have um, just a pitch black background, like it's kind of doing a bit of a weird thing here, but you can see this, it is working and it might, it might work better with like other types of patterns. Like, yeah, this is not, well, actually this might work fine. Let's try putting this onto like a circle. So maybe uh, let's just do, Let's do a cylinder. I'll just do 64 here. And I'll just bring that over here. Let's just control L material. So we just have that on here. Uh, and then we can just put this, just Q project it. In fact, maybe let's just do a circle just for this example. And then let's just correct face attributes. And there we go. Good enough. So yeah, you can see um, maybe it might work better if you generate an image that's not just black and white. Like if you do something more metallic or um, like made of different materials, like this worked a bit better. Um, that seems to work nicer, but this is good enough for this example. So you can see there's so much stuff you can do with it from here. Like we can take this up, we can drop in like a roughness map. So let's go to uh, like a folder from textures.com. Just grab any like piece of metal, drop that in. We'll go run that into the roughness. And now we're getting some roughness variation. Let's just take this down, this up. We could even just use a different color map on this and then just get something else. Let's maybe make that darker because it's very very bright. Um, but yeah, you could see, maybe let's actually run this back in, but then just take a curves maybe. Um, yeah, there's so much insane stuff you can do with this. Like this could be useful in a lot of uh, like different contexts. Like this is just a weird example scene that I'm using here, but imagine if you actually like created an environment around something like this. Um, 
So yeah, you can see totally. Oh wow. Yeah, I'm so excited about this because it's um, there's just like the the possibilities of stuff you can do with this is so it's so crazy. Okay, let's try something else. Let's try like. Yeah, so you can see it uh, disappeared off of this one. So again, just make sure when you do this, you go in and I'll just do this right now. Image, like just find the normal map in the UV editor. Image, save as, and then just save it to, I'm just, there's probably a better way to organize it than this, but saving it to a folder with a bunch of normal maps. I'll just call it whatever normal, save, and there we go. So let's try something else. Let's try like maybe some more, I don't know, organic kind of shapes. So slash imagine um an intricate cellular structure Let's see what that does and then we can use that to uh generate some more normal and height maps and oh to get height maps from this you just click on once you generate the normal map so it generated this you just click on generate height map uh the, just the next button so it's just like you go from top one to the next one to whatever um, I haven't used this, I don't really know what this does, but if you click this with the normal map selected, it'll do the same thing. It'll do the same thing, except you just get, you know, a height map instead. So you can use it for displacement. Um, and then what I would do is just run this into uh, displacement height, and then that can just go straight out into the displacement. And then now we have, um, we could use like adaptive subdivision if we want. So put a subdivision on there. Make sure we're in experimental cycles and then just go down to uh, settings, displacement and bump. And then there we go. We've got displacement. If we just turn it on a little bit, it would be good. So now we've got actual, yeah, let's go 0.02, like actual displacement happening from that. Um, there's probably better settings you can dial in with this. And there's probably other software you can run this through too that specifically uh, it's like more optimized for generating normal and height maps, but I just found this free add-on and it works well enough for this. So, so here, let's take one of these. This could be really cool. So let's take upscale one, two, three, and then this might be really interesting to run into to like generate height maps out of this. There's so much um, insane stuff you can do with this. People are also asking about tiling images. Uh, Mid-Journey version four cannot tile images, but version three can. So if you just type in um, whatever you want. So in, uh, cellular structure, whatever your command, and then all the all you do is this, at the very end, you need to be in V like version three. So you type dash dash V space three. And then the next thing you want is also dash dash, uh, to make it tile, you want just dash dash tile like this, and then that will uh, put you into version three, which is capable of tiling v version four isn't which is the default on here. And then you just type in tile and it'll make it a seamless repeating pattern. Okay, so check this out. So we've got this, let's save it. Uh, I just got a big folder on my desktop. I should probably organize this, but whatever. Save, not even naming it. Um, okay, so let's come back here. There's actually two ways you can do this. You can use this add-on that I just showed you, or you can actually use it as a stencil in sculpt mode. Um, so I'll show you this. Let's, I'll show you this one more time first, just to give you another example. So new texture desktop the journey and find that cellular thing we just made. Uh, so this drop it in and then let's go base color. And then let's also generate normal map. Let's see what that does. There we go. Um, so yeah, if that if this doesn't work well, um, you can also do it this way where the other method I was doing before uh, I found this add-on is you just take a plane. So let's do this. Let's subdivide it a bunch. So it doesn't really matter, whatever, like that. Let's go to solid view. Uh, and then uh, I'm not going to save this. <clears throat> so then we just have this subdivided plane like this. And then let's go to sculpt mode. And you can see I already have this set up, but I'll just do it on the new brush. So uh, we're just in regular sculpting. What I want to do is go to texture, press new, and then just click this button right here, this whatever this is, uh, brings you over here, press open, and then just find um, whatever image you want to want, whatever image you want to use. So let's try the uh, this 
thing we just made, this cellular, cellular thing. And you can see it's now putting it on there, but it's, there's a few, the two problems are it's tiling weird and it's also just not high enough resolution. So let's use a multi-resolution modifier, which seems to just be better and faster in sculpt mode than just more subdivisions. I think that's what it does. Uh, so let's go three, maybe, maybe four subdivisions. So now it's working, but um, it's like tiling weird. To fix that, all you do is you go to texture and then it, on the mapping where it says tiled, you just switch that to, um, I've been using stencil. So you just, it gives you this and then you can just right click and drag to line it up and then just shift right click to scale. Um, there's more videos on like how to actually use sculpt mode. Um, you can go watch that, but if you just click all the buttons I just showed you, it'll work fine. And then let's just turn the uh, intensity down and then just paint in where you want to see it. So maybe a bit more up here. If you go too intense, it's like um, not, not a big deal because on a flat plane, at least you can just scale it down. So let's do that. And then um, let's actually fill this in a bit more. Okay. So now we can't see anything because our viewport levels are at zero. So just turn that up to four or three or whatever. Um, so there we go. We have it on a thing here. You can shade it smooth. And then if it is too rough and choppy, um, you can either just scale it down with this, or you can actually go back into sculpt mode and then just take the smooth brush and then turn down the, the intensity and then just kind of smooth uh, things over a little bit. So that might work better. And uh, here we go. So you can use this to just generate really crazy stuff like this. Um, you can put it on spheres. Like in the last video, the very first frame, people were asking about that, like the first animation. That was using this technique, using sculpting, and then just putting it on a sphere. Um, yeah, and then you just take this. We can take, um, like there's so much crazy stuff you can do. We can make like, maybe let's turn up the, uh, let's turn this down to three because this is kind of laggy. Um, yeah, we can take like, make it metallic or um, not metallic and turn up the subsurface. Make like really weird organic textures. Or, um, but anyways, it's a lot of fun generating normal, normal maps with these like crazy weird patterns that you can make with this. Um, so some of the, some of the cool prompts that I found are like, um, circles of intricate patterns with just like, I don't know, put the Illuminati in there, put weird alien stuff in there. Uh, Aztec stuff is always cool. Um, let's see what else is in here. Uh, oh, this was really cool. Using, using it to generate um, like broken glass or ice. So this one, I typed in a full frame shot of cracked ice, glowing, and black background. It gave me this. Um, so that's what you could do. You can, like, there's so much cool stuff you can do with Mid Journey. Um, if you want to learn what kind of prompts to use and how all the commands work and stuff, I'd recommend checking out uh, a guy called Matt Wolf on YouTube. He does really cool Mid Journey tutorials. Um, and then, yeah, use that. Use it in combination with Blender, like I'm showing you here, or Cinema 4D or whatever. I'm sure in other software, there's different uh, tools you can use to generate height maps like this. But um, yeah, so much cool stuff you can do with this. Super exciting. So yeah, hopefully that was useful. Go experiment with this. Show me what weird, cool stuff you make. And um, yeah, I'll see you around. Peace.